Berrettini, not the only Italian sportsman in action, with the Azzurri beating England 3-2 on penalties last night for their first Euro title since 1968. It's coming home, more like it's coming to Rome. Less than four years since failing to qualify for the World Cup, Italy are the best team in Europe and on a 34-match unbeaten run under Roberto Mancini. But from ecstasy to agony, England's 55-year wait for a trophy continues. Manager Gareth Southgate said he's to blame for their penalty failure rather than the three players who missed in the shootout. And the penalty takers are my call. You know, we, we've worked on them in training. Um, that's my decision. That's not, uh, that's not down to the players. And um, tonight it, it hasn't gone for us. Um, but... We, we know they were the best takers that we had left on the pitch. We tried to get uh, th those players onto the pitch. We'd already had to take a couple off during the, during the game itself. Um, so, yeah, of course, it's, uh, it, it, it's going to be heartbreaking for the boys, but they, they, uh, they are not, they're not to blame for that. That's my call as the coach. One of England's penalty takers was Bukayo Saka, just 19 years old, taking the first penalty of his senior career. He was inconsolable after his decisive miss. Well, let's bring in sports correspondent Sazali Abdul Aziz to break down this final. Sazali, do you agree with what Southgate said? Were England's five penalty takers the best players left on the pitch? I mean, well... First of all, uh, Olivia, it's, it's a Groundhog Day, isn't it? You know, every, every man and their dog has gone back to questioning uh, Gareth Southgate's decisions. If there were question marks over the way he set the team up, about the substitution he made or, or hesitated to make. Uh, and ultimately, as you mentioned, about the kickers. Uh, were the five uh, the right players? Uh, you know, well, two were sent on specifically for the kicks and they missed. So you can put that down to a, lot uh, a lottery maybe, but... Uh, where I strongly believe the England manager messed up was uh, putting, as you mentioned, Saka down as a last kicker. Uh, I just cannot fathom the, the, the thought process. Uh, the risk versus reward was just not there. Um, not only, you know, at being such a young player is his temperament in question. Uh, how fair was it to, to put the weight of a nation's hopes uh, completely on a team's shoulders? So, yeah, I think he got that one uh, at least wrong. Mm. Right. Well, you know, England got off to a dream start when Luke Shaw scored in the second minute, but how did it come apart for them in the end? Yeah, the, the goal sent uh, Wembley wild, uh, but it almost came, you know, like too soon and, and changed the complexion of the whole game. I know it sounds silly, but it's a prime example uh, of scoring at the wrong time, if you will. Uh, some coaches have, you know, pointed this out, that it can have a, a negative impact on players because they will, you know, subconsciously, automatically tend to sit back and try to defend uh, that precious goal, and, and that's what happened to England. Uh, more likely by uh, consequence than by design, their, their players lack adventure. You know, they had a few chances here and there, but Italy chasing the game uh, had so much time on their hands and, and grew into the game as it went on uh, to the point that the equaliser was almost inevitable. Um, as I mentioned, you know, many observers on, on Twitter, on commentary, uh, were pointing out that England had to start considering making changes early in the second half. Uh, Southgate decided against it, while Italy sent on two subs. Uh, in the end, being proactive paid off for the Italians. I see. Well, let's put Euro 2020 aside. The next major football tournament is the World Cup in Qatar next year. How does the Euro outcome vote for England and Italy? Well, for Italy, it puts them uh, right up there as a, as a major player in international football again. They, they were in the wilderness for a while with uh, group stage exits at at the 2010 and 2014 World Cup uh, and missed the 2018 edition completely. Uh, they have a good group of, of, of decent young players coming through and they should be considered contenders for, uh, in Qatar. Uh, for England, they are, uh, again, at another crossroads, uh, it will be really, really interesting to see how their players rebound from this. Uh, they surpassed expectations once uh, at the 2018 World Cup uh, and they built on that to do well at, at this European Championships. Uh, but coming so close and missing out, uh, you know, in, in such a manner, you know, the heartbreak will either break or make them. So, so let's see. Mm. Well, certainly uh, time will tell. Sazali, thank you so much for coming on the show. That was Sazali Abdul Aziz, sports correspondent for The Straits Times.